Hello and welcome back to the Level Up English podcast. Michael here, and I am so, so happy to be with you again on a beautiful but quite cloudy Wednesday morning. I am in my nice, well, my new office right now, but it's still very empty. It's very empty. There isn't much in here and the echo is really bad. So you might see behind me, I don't know if you can, on the video version, I've kind of filled the room with some blankets. I've got an old mattress in here as well, and it's helping quite a lot reduce the echo. So I think I sound okay right now, but there is a lot to do. I want to decorate it and make it all nice in the future, but oh well, at least I'm here now and I'm recording again. That's the main thing. And I know most of you listen on the audio version anyway, so it will not make any difference to you. But anyway, I would like to today talk about zombies and inversion. I think it's a really fun episode because I'm combining something a bit fun and scary like zombies into grammar, which is inversion today. So let's call this episode Zombie Inversion. And I hope that you will have fun, but also learn some really useful and honestly quite advanced English grammar today. So we'll get to that very shortly. I do want to take some time to talk about Level Up English membership. So maybe you are already a member or you just really don't care. You just want to listen. You can probably skip ahead on your phone about two minutes to skip this part. I understand. I won't feel too bad if you do that. But I do often get questions about it. People messaging me like, what's going on? What is it? And I understand it can be quite confusing. It's a lot to explain. So I'll do my best to explain very quickly right now because this is the thing that helps the podcast survive and keep going, right? I know many people like to support me over there. They don't even use the website, but they just like to pay and join the membership, which is so, so amazing. It's, it really helps support me. And if people want to donate, that's always a nice thing that they can do. However, I have never really been happy with the idea of asking for donations. I think, I don't, I don't know why, it just doesn't feel right. So my idea was always to set up that structure for donations, if you like, but also to give something back in return. And I think I am giving back a lot. In fact, I think it's one of the best English deals that you can find anywhere on the internet. So basically, Level Up English Members is a website I created where you can pay, at the moment you pay £10 a month. So that's it, just £10 a month. And included in that membership, you can get access to transcripts to all of my podcast episodes. So this will help with your listening skills, your reading skills, learning new vocabulary. As well as that, with the podcast episodes, there are quizzes, new words you can learn, vocab lists, things like that, lots of bonus content. We also have group lessons, which happen on a regular basis. So we meet on Zoom at least once a week. That's a lot of fun. There's a writing course over there to help improve your writing where people write an article or short essay. And I will give my feedback and my corrections for that. We have pronunciation courses, grammar courses, vocabulary courses. We have everything really. We have an IELTS exam course. So if you're studying for the exam, myself and teacher Esan, an IELTS instructor, have put a lot of time into that course. We also have a private podcast, which comes out every Friday. This is a totally separate podcast for members. It's much more casual. I talk more naturally. I talk more about private things that I'm feeling right now. You know, not too private, but a bit more, a bit more personal, a bit more friendly kind of feeling. So all that stuff and probably more. I, I'm, I think I'm missing a few things like YouTube lessons and stuff as well. But that is all included with Level Up English members. So I'll end my advert here for today, but just know that this really helps support the podcast and I know it can help you improve your English as well. If you're interested, there's a link 
in the description below. You can sign up there or just go to levelupenglish.school and click on that members button. If you did listen to that and you didn't skip ahead, then thank you for staying with me. Really appreciate it. And let's get into the topic today, shall we? So the reason I wanted to talk about zombies today is because I love zombie stuff, whether that's TV series, movies, uh, video games. I recently played an amazing game on PlayStation called Days Gone. I think it's called Days Gone, where it's like you and your, your friend. You've got motorbikes, you're killing zombies. It's such a great game. I love it so much. And then, right well, right now, I have started to watch The Last of Us. Many of you may know this. It is a game and it has now been made into a TV series by HBO, I believe. And I've only seen the first episode so far, but it's already amazing. I'm so excited for more episodes, but yeah, that's really good. So because I am an avid watcher of all things zombie, if you're avid, that means you do something a lot with enthusiasm. So maybe you're an avid reader. I am an avid zombie watcher, I suppose. So because of that, I was inspired to create a podcast lesson around this topic. And I want to talk today about how we could survive a zombie outbreak using inverted conditionals. This word outbreak is a noun. It come, comes from the word break out, together, outbreak. And it's when something escapes. So it could be a virus outbreak, I suppose, or a zombie outbreak. The zombies kind of breaking out of, I don't know where from, but that's what we call it. When there's a big problem with something like that, it's a zombie outbreak. So I got a request to talk about more grammar on the podcast. And I thought, okay, I'll do my best, but I want to make it fun because I think grammar can be boring. So let's try to make it fun today. That is why I have combined these two things. So I think I'm kind of an expert on this topic, right? Because <laughs> based on my extensive deep knowledge of watching many zombie movies and playing all the games, I feel like I know quite a lot about what you could do to survive. So I'm going to share what I have learnt today and I don't think it's ever going to happen. I don't think it's realistic, but let's just imagine for fun what would happen. I hope it doesn't scare anyone and who knows, it could be good advice. Who knows? Who knows really? I will give you a warning though. This is pretty advanced grammar. So if you want an introduction to conditional sentences, maybe go back to episode 65. And in that episode, I spoke about how to use if and conditionals like a native speaker. So that's a bit of an introduction. In an inverted sentence, inverted or inversion is the noun. This is where things change position. So instead of saying the word if, we change the order of the verb and the subject. This is usually used for formal situations, right? It's usually more formal. So it's very common in writing and it can be common in speech as well, but it will make you sound more formal and maybe even a bit smarter. So if you're just talking to your friends very casually, then maybe there's no need to use it. It just depends really, but maybe we'll come back to that. So let me just explain a couple rules and then we'll do some examples. So for the first conditional, we would use the word should. So should plus subject, and then we have the infinitive form of the verb. So instead of saying, if I see you, I will be happy. That's a very simple sentence, quite uh, basic. If I see you, I will be happy. We would say, should I see you, I will be happy. So basically, rather than if I see you, we just say, should I see you? 
this should is not the same meaning as the normal should, like I should go. It's a different meaning. So don't worry too much about that. Don't get them confused. So should you find yourself in a zombie apocalypse, I recommend following my advice. Right? Should you find yourself in this situation, as an example? As I'm talking today, try to think of your own examples as well. That's going to be really helpful. Should you find yourself surrounded by zombies, I would suggest running really fast in one direction and hoping you can break through that line of zombies. Honestly, if you're surrounded, I don't know what you can do. It sounds a bit, a bit tricky, but I think running really fast is your best bet because you might be able to knock them over as you run, right? But that's that's a common phrase. You say, should you find yourself in this situation? Should you find yourself in trouble? That's very common. Should you end up stuck inside your house? I would recommend going to a really high point in your house. Is that good advice? I don't know. It's difficult to escape if you're up high, isn't it? But most zombies and movies are not great at climbing and going up, upstairs, up ladders. So if you have someone really high in your house that zombies will have difficulty getting to, that could be a good solution. Maybe go to the roof, right? And then you can just knock them off the roof. That could be fun. <laughs> I think there's many good tips for this. Like, should you be the first to notice there is a zombie outbreak, I would recommend running instantly to your nearest shop or nearest department store. This is actually my idea. So I think if there were to be a zombie outbreak, I would go to a shop, a store, and I would maybe pick up some could like motorcycle gear or maybe some horse riding gear right i know like a motorcyclist or a horse rider they often have like these padded clothes and if a zombie were to bite you it wouldn't be able to get through because your clothes are too thick i think that could be a good idea there's a shop near me that sells things like crossbows kind of like bow and arrow guns and maybe get, get a baseball bat or something like that get a weapon right because i think as soon as things get crazy these are going to disappear off the shelves. Someone's going to want to get these things. So you have to be the first. Should you be the first to find out, I recommend going, going there, getting that. Another question I have seen online is whether you should stay at home to begin with or if you should run away right when everything goes down, everything gets crazy. I actually think... A lot of the problems that happen in movies happen because people panic and they run away, they get stuck in traffic, they get stuck in crowds, and they cannot do anything. But I think, should you... Hmm, let's move to the second condition, actually, for this one. So I'll explain more in a second. Second conditional is... I, I Maybe it's a bit more formal. It's a bit less common. I think the first conditional is really common for inversion. Second is perhaps less common. But in this one, we say were. So rather than if I ever visited America, I would go to New York. We would say were I to ever visit America, I would go to New York. So, so rather than if I... We just say, were I. Not too much has changed, but it does sound quite formal. So, were you to stay at home when the zombie outbreak begins, you might be safer. There's my advice for you. Because I think people panic. You stay at home, maybe for a couple hours, the panic dies down, right? People have got used to it, or maybe, sadly, some people have been turned into zombies as well. And, you know, after a few hours, 
you hide in your house, it might be a little bit safer to go out and escape. But everyone will be escaping in that first minute, that first hour, right? So that's when it's going to be crazy, I think. So whether you follow my advice or not, I don't know. Let me know what you think if that's good advice. But I just want to reassure you, if you do get scared easily, this is not going to happen. Don't worry. <laughs> I like imagining this stuff, but I know many people don't understand. Like, wait, why do you like this? But I love horror movies. I love scary things. That's just my, just my, it's just my jam. Just what I like. That's what that means. Here's another one with the second conditional. So were you to hone your skills, you would be better prepared. Let's explain a little bit here. To hone, H-O-N-E, means to improve something, to sharpen something, make it better. To hone your skills, that's a common collocation, to hone your skills, and it means to work on your skills. For example, you might want to hone your survival skills. You know, how to make drinking water from dirty water, how to find food in the woods, or you might want to hone your athletic skills, how fast you can run, uh, how well you can hit someone. D don't practice that one, actually. Don't do that. <laughs> so these things are important to hone, to improve, and... Yeah, I think those could be good. So were you to hone your skills, you would be better prepared. In simple conditional, that would be if you honed your skills, you would be better prepared. I say simple, it's still not easy. Even the basic conditionals are not easy. So this is super advanced. If this is too difficult for you, please don't worry. I hope you still enjoy listening and we're picking up some other words like hone as well. So even if the grammar is too hard, I'm sure you can still learn something new, right? The last one is third conditional. And I think this is, this is more common than the second when it comes to inversion. So normally a third conditional would sound like, if I had known that, I would not have come. This is the hardest one, right? And in this one, we're talking about past regrets. So when we talk about things in the past, we use this. If I had known, past perfect tense there, I would not have come. It's quite long. For an inverted sentence here, we have had and then the subject. So had I known if I had known becomes had I known. So the if is gone, disappeared, and then the I and the had, the subject and the had, switch places. Had I known, had you known, something like that. This one is pretty common, and I would say probably the most common in daily conversation as well, even though it is the hardest one. Had I known it was going to rain, I would have stayed at home. It sounds more posh, more formal than the regular if, but the meaning is the same. So, for example, let's say now it's one week after the zombie outbreak began and we're thinking, oh, I have so many regrets. I mean, at least I survived, but I would have done so many things differently. For example, had I known the virus was airborne, I would have bought a gas mask. This word airborne, somewhat advanced word, which means something is spread through the air, usually a virus. So for example, COVID-19, uh, the coronavirus is an airborne virus. So if you cough, it's in the air. You don't have to touch someone to get sick. You can get sick from breathing in the virus in the air, right? So the zombie virus was airborne. Had I known it was airborne, I would have bought a gas mask. Going back to the second conditional, were you to buy a gas mask, you would be safer, right? Had I not listened to Michael's podcast, I wouldn't have been so prepared. 
So this is a double negative here, very confusing. In simple English, this means I was prepared because I listened to Michael's podcast. If I didn't, if I had not listened, I would not have been prepared. So had I not listened, I would have been in trouble. That's a good one there. Here's, a, here's an interesting one. So actually, I have a basement where I live now and I recorded in my basement on a recent YouTube video that you can check out on my main channel. It was very spooky down there. But I think it would be really cool, really fun to turn the basement into like a survival shelter, right? So I don't think I'll actually do this, but it's just a fun idea. Imagine there were to be a zombie outbreak. I would go down into my basement. I would have shelves of food. I would have, you know, a phone to call people. I would be super safe down there. No zombies can find my basement. It would be very safe, I believe. So had I known zombies were coming, I would have stocked up on food, right? To stock up is to buy lots of things in advance, maybe to prepare for something. It's a good idea to stock up on toilet paper. You never know when you might need it. Why not stock up on rice or pasta? Things that last a long time. But yeah, had I known zombies were coming, I would have filled my basement with canned foods and you know, foods that can be kept for a long time. But now the zombies are here, I don't have any food. I need to go find some. It's dangerous outside. Oh no, what a problem. So I think that's a good idea uh, to really focus on uh, your supplies, right? I, I guess like you need to be somewhat prepared with your food and your water because you will have bigger problems to worry about, like zombies breaking into your house. And yeah, I guess one last one here. Let's do, let's do one more. Had I known there was going to be a zombie outbreak, I would have practiced running more. That's a long one. Had I known there was going to be a zombie outbreak, I would have practiced running more. Hmm. I should be a better runner. I think that's a really important skill to have in this situation, right? But I think I'll leave it there. I will summarize these grammar points on the blog post, on my show notes. So if you go to levelupenglish.school slash podcast 206, you will see a summary of this grammar. And if you want extra practice, that is available on the members website. So over there, I'll put some extra practice for people to do these exercises and learn this grammar. But yeah, it is very advanced. So again, please don't worry if this just went over your head. It's too much. That's fine. You got to do baby steps, you know, baby steps. But I do know we have some super advanced listeners on this podcast. So for you guys, I hope this was useful. I am going to end this topic with my best advice for a zombie outbreak. And this is from all the movies I've seen. And this is, do not say ever, never ever say, I'm gonna go into these woods over here and use the bathroom. Be right back. <laughs> Whenever someone says that, it's always gonna be a problem. It's like, I know we're all safe in our little group here. Everything's fine. I'm just gonna walk out of sight behind those trees to use the bathroom. It's not gonna end well, right? So don't do that. <laughs> But yeah, there's also a very useful word which I want to teach before I give you the quote today. This is the word horde. And we use it as a collective noun for zombies, a horde of zombies. Just like you have a herd of cows, you might have a school of whales. For zombies, even though they're fictional, we use this word horde, a horde of zombies. In the game I mentioned before, called Days Gone, you get these hordes of zombies and you have to just like throw grenades at them, shoot them. It, it's so much fun, honestly, but it's very, very scary. So that word horde is quite useful for a large group of things. But okay, we'll come back to that when we look at the quote. I just want to say a very quick thank you to some reviews 
on Apple Podcasts. We've had so many recently, so thank you so much. It really made me so happy to see. So I've got one here from In In Lino. Lin. I don't know if it's an I or an L. I'm gonna say I. Inino. It's easier to pronounce. I am scared someone will laugh at me, but I like your podcast. What? Come on. No one's going to laugh at you. This is the coolest podcast ever. But thank you very much for the review. I'm really glad you like it. One more here from Z Zetso. Zetso. Random username, it looks like. And they said, Hello from Saudi Arabia. This is amazing. I loved your podcast from your first episode that I listened to. Your language is easy and smooth to hear. Best of luck. Thank you very much. That's kind of you. Very nice. One more quick one here from Joey in Japan. Hi, I'm Joe from Japan and I enjoyed this podcast so much. This really helps me learn things about English and improve my English. I've been making songs in my language, but one day I'd like to write lyrics in English as well. This might be a difficult question, but how can I learn to rhyme? Or is there anything that you can recommend in order to be able to rhyme? Any books or things like that? Hmm, that's interesting. Um, I haven't thought about it before. Very quickly, I would suggest becoming really comfortable with the phonetic alphabet because that will show you what words rhyme because for example if you look at a word like let's use your name joe it ends in an o if you look at a word like canoe canoe and joe both end in o e so you might think they rhyme based on the spelling right like joe cano maybe but no, you know, English spelling is not that easy. So if you look at the phonetic alphabet, you will see they are different. So you maybe can realise that Joe rhymes with mo and ho and go, all these other words, right? I think that's a really important one. I don't know of any books like that, I'm afraid. I don't know of any other resources, but it could be a slow process of finding uh, words on the dictionary. I do know there are great websites as well where you can find rhyming words. So if you just go on Google and type in words that rhyme with Joe, you will find a whole list of like maybe hundreds of words from one syllable words to five syllable words and more. And I use that sometimes when I'm thinking of a name idea or something like that. It's very useful. So maybe those lists will help you as well. And perhaps even more than a book can help. So that's the advice I have, very simple, but hope it helps. Thank you very much for your review as well, Joe, or Joey. Okay, let's end today with a quote. This is from Walt Disney. And he said, to be successful, you must be unique. You must be so different that if people want what you have, they must come to you to get it. I think this is great. I think being unique is often important in getting success. If you follow everyone else, you're never gonna stand out. You're never gonna get that success. But the reason why I chose this one today is because hoard is often used for people who follow other people. You know, zombies gather in hordes. They follow each other. They don't think independently. So don't be a zombie. Don't join the horde of zombies. Be unique. Be independent. Do what you want. Uh, I think that's going to lead to success. Right? Y you see my connection there? Hope so. Uh, I'll leave it there for today. Maybe I'll see you on the private podcast on Friday where I talk about how to get out of a rut. It's going to be an interesting one. But thank you for sticking with me. Difficult episode, but hope it was a fun one. I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone. See you later. You have been listening to the Level Up English podcast. If you would like to leave a question to be answered on a future episode, then please go to levelupenglish.school forward slash podcast. That's levelupenglish.school slash podcast. 
and I'll answer your question on a future episode. Thanks for listening.